All right, welcome back to Memphis as we get ready for the second round of the 2024 NCAA Men's Division I Championship. First up today are student athletes from Baylor, the Bears, now 24 and 10 as the three seed. They will take on number six Clemson tomorrow. That is a 5 10 tip on TNT. Joined by a couple student athletes from the Bears to my left is Freshman forward Eve Misi, and to his left is Jaden Nunn, junior guard. We'll open the floor for questions for the student athletes. If you will uh, raise a hand, raise your hand. We have mics on both sides of the room. Start with your name and affiliation, and the student athlete we're directing your question. We'll start right in front. Bryce Cherry, Waco Trib. Eve, uh, just how are you feeling, and do you fully expect to, to be good to go for tomorrow? Uh, I feel way better since yesterday. We've been working on my back. Uh, I had a lot of treatment, and I should be ready to go tomorrow. You want it again? All right, we'll stay where we were and then go to the left. Jaden, that was your first NCAA tournament win, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, you know, just how exciting was that, especially the way y'all were able to you know, hit a lot of threes and, you know, kind of everybody getting in on the act. Yeah, it feels good, you know, seeing everybody, you know, with a smile on their face. You know, last year I got put out first round, so I got used to going home, you know, lost to St. Mary's last year in the first round. So it just feels good to get the first win under my belt. So, yeah. To our left. Austin Nicholas, Baylor Lariat. Eve, you've been talking about how excited you've been for this moment. What was it like to just be out there and be in the spotlight? Uh, it was really great. Obviously, we got the win and Everyone was happy. It was a great experience. I never, I never experienced it before, so I'm really happy for it. Go on the back row. Justin Williams from the Athletic. Along that same line, you know, Coach talked about you just started playing basketball a few years ago. What was your knowledge of the NCAA tournament? You know, coming into this experience, and how did it kind of match or live up to it? Uh, not a lot of knowledge, obviously, but I just been watching on TV, and right now it's my first time, so I'm really discovering every day and just see how it is, really amazing. Uh, the questions will come back down front and then directly behind. Jaden, what have you guys seen just uh, on Clemson in terms of your scouting? Uh, I mean, obviously, it's been a quick turnaround. But. Mm -hmm. They have very, you know, uh, big guards. You know, they got very physical bigs, you know. So we're going to emphasize, you know, friend of post and, you know, just trying to be physical all game with the bigs, you know, boxing out and do whatever we got to do to, you know, just to keep them out the game. So, yeah. Jerry Hill, Baylor Bear Insider. Jaden, um, I guess just how good did it feel to see the ball go through? Because this seemed like a glimpse of what this team can be hitting 16 three-pointers. Yeah, it feels great. You know, everybody, you know, had an input on that game. And when everybody, you know, playing like that, I feel like we're very hard to beat. And I feel like we're very capable of playing like that every game, really. So, yeah, we're very hard to beat when we play like that. We're going uh, the next two from the back on our left. Uh, Eve, how much has it helped you having JTT, you know, from Cameroon and, and even Josh just to kind of help acclimate you to this whole experience in America? Uh, it's great, you know, I'm taking advice every day from John and Josh, and John, John is my roommate, so he talk a lot. He just gave me advice about the game, about life in general, so he's definitely a great mentor. Stay there. Kennington Smith from The Athletic. This is for either player. Um, this really doesn't have anything to do with basketball, but as I was walking through the corridor, I heard the team practicing the Stomp by Kirk Franklin, which is just like oh, an yeah. incredible hype song. Um, is gospel music practicing? Is that, is that like a regular thing? And who's in charge of making the playlist? Uh, yeah, it is a regular thing. You know, uh, Shiv, our manager, our basketball manager, he's in charge of making that playlist, and uh, Mirce as well. But, you know, we listen to gospel music every day, and, you know, I got a gospel playlist as well, you know, to help me out. So, you know, coming to Baylor has, you know, just helped me get closer with God as well. So, yeah. Coming back down uh, in front. Eve, uh, Josh had some, uh, some nice plays in that uh, game yesterday, including a steal and breakaway dunk. Uh, you know, when he comes in as your backup and, and plays like that, I mean, are you really excited for him? Oh yeah, I'm always excited whenever I see uh, Josh or John playing good. Uh, he's just like my brother, so every time I see them make a great play, I'm really excited for them. I'm just here for cheer for them. Other questions for student athletes? We're going to our back left. Uh, Eve, what have you seen looking at Clemson's bigs? Obviously, I would imagine the assumption is you'll be seeing quite a bit of PJ Hall, but Ian Shefflin as well, Jack Clark, RJ Godfrey. What are your impressions of Clemson's bigs? 
Uh, they have a lot of great bigs. Uh, we can post up. Uh, they're really physical, so we also have to match up that physicality. And the plan for the game is just trying to uh, be physical, trying to front them on the post, trying to make them uncomfortable. Right down in front of us. Eve, how difficult was that to do last night or yesterday when the back's hurting and things like that? They're trying to be physical. They obviously had their way at times down low. How difficult or did that affect your play, your back and stuff? Uh, it definitely affected me, but, you know, uh, regardless of how you're feeling, you just have to play through it and then give it all to your team. Either it's on the court or on the bench, just cheer for your team, maybe be happy for them. Over here, just uh, to the left. Jaden, obviously not on the team last year, but back-to-back -back years departing in the second round. Has that been a talk in the locker room of just trying to get over the hump? Um, no, I've never been a part of that, but, you know, um, I've, I've been watching college basketball, so, you know, I know they have, you know, got put out in the second round these past couple of years, but, you know, I'm looking forward to just help them get over that hump for sure, do whatever I got to can't, do whatever I got to do to get this win, because, you know, I want to go to the Sweet 16. I want to go as far as uh, we possibly can, so, yeah. Back left. Jane, when Clemson's gotten in trouble this year, it's usually been teams having pretty hot shooting nights from beyond the arc. That's obviously a big part of your identity. Mm -hmm. How much do you think the three-point line will be crucial to the game tomorrow? Uh, it's going to be very crucial. You know, I feel like if we just uh, make shots like we normally do, I feel like we're going to have uh, no problem winning this game. So, And, you know, just defend the bigs, you know, in the post and be physical with them. And I'm going to help ease out whatever I got to do. You know, go down there and help the bigs. So, yeah, we should be all right. Going back to the front row. Jaden, Ray J has played a lot of minutes, uh, especially in Big 12 play. Uh, there was that moment in the first half where he gets his third foul. You've got to take over the point guard spot. I mean, you know, are you completely comfortable in that role? I mean, you look like you were. Yeah, you know, all summer um, I played against Ray J, and I had to play the one, you know, for the opposing team that I was playing against him with, you know, scrimmaging. I had to play the one all summer. So, you know, just doing things like that all summer just helped me get comfortable. And then, you know, I take things, you know, little, little things from Ray J because, you know, he's a great point guard. So, you know, I try to learn from the, from the best, you know, yeah. Any others? All right, gentlemen, we'll let you go. Thank you for your time. Good luck tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. Probably about 10 minutes away from being joined by Coach Drew as he finishes up with CBS and Westwood One. That was the, yeah, the scheduled time.
Five minutes away from being joined by Coach Drew. How are we doing? Good. You get the double fist. fist this one. Double fist. Yeah. You want this one? <laughs> no, I'm good. Thanks. You sure? Yes, sir. How's everybody doing today? We're joined by Baylor coach Scott Drew with yesterday's win. His program became just one of four with a tournament win in each of the last five NCAA tournaments. Also there, 92 points yesterday was a program best in an NCAA tournament game as they get set to be back on the floor tomorrow at 5-10 against Clemson. Coach, uh, we'll take an opening statement if you have one before we open it up for questions. Well, it was uh, uh, a great day yesterday for uh, 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 the Drew family. Um, the only, the only uh, thing I wish was my brother got done playing a little bit early. It was past my bedtime. Um, and uh, other than that, really excited to have a chance to play against a really uh, uh, good Clemson team. Um, very well coached, very disciplined, uh, a lot of players that play the right way. And obviously, uh, uh, for all those that saw them yesterday, know how good they are. All right, we'll open it up for questions. If you raise your hand, we'll get a microphone to you, and we'll start on the front row. Scott, uh, Eve mentioned that he fully expects to be out there tomorrow. How important will that be to have all your bullets against a team like Clemson with the bigs that they have? Well, you def definitely want to uh, – 
healthy interior because uh, you're going to need them all. And uh, Clemson's as deep in the front line as you're going to find in college basketball. Uh, most college teams are lucky if they have one guy who can play in the post. Uh, they got they got three, four, five guys they can run in there. So um, with us, I know uh, uh, Eve did a great job uh, trying to fight through the other day. Uh, hopefully, uh, uh, you'll be in better shape physically. Um, Dave Snyder, our trainer, does a great job with that. Charlie Melton, our strength coach. So uh, anyway, uh, and Eve's a tough kid. On the second row. So did you stay up in time to – did you watch all of Bryce's game? Yeah, well, I mean, at the end of the game, I had to stay up because they were shooting awful quick. I mean, I, I, <laughs> Scott, you had talked about it before, but what was Homer's travel plans? Where where did he go and what, hey, where will he be tomorrow? I don't know, he's probably uh, uh, somewhere over Oklahoma right now. I think he gets in tonight uh, about 9 o'clock and – I told him he should just stay in Spokane because, uh, as we all know, it's a three-day travel to get here. But uh, uh, anyway, he wanted to be here, so he'll be here tonight. So excited to see him. I'm sure he'll have his uh, uh, notes for me when he arrives. <laughs> Go to the back left. <laughs> Justin Williams from The Athletic. Coach, your players have talked a lot about your positivity the past couple of days. Where does that come from for you? Uh, my dad, uh, he, he's a real positive uh, 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 man, great uh, coach, better father. And uh, just that's how he approaches life. And um, uh, everybody's got different uh, uh, strengths, weaknesses. I know my wife says my positivity bothers her at times. But um, <laughs> but uh, I tend to look at the glass uh, half full. Back left. Uh, Jeff Legwald, ESPN, uh, to your left. Oh, thanks. Just a general question. Uh, and I saw Danny Hurley asked about this a lot. but. In terms of repeating, you've, you've been a champion. Yeah. Is it more difficult in this environment, or is it just the same as it was? Well, I think uh, uh, let's start with this. How many teams have won a game in the last how many years? Uh, that would be four in so, the last five tournaments. I mean, you, you, you typically think that there's probably 15 great programs that are getting to the Sweet 16 every year. And I mean, it's hard to get to the tournament. It's hard to win a game in the tournament. And I think when you look at national championships, you probably look back and say, God really blessed us. And for example, the year after we won it, the next year, we were 15-0, and and we had already lost Langston Love for the season with an ACL. And then we lose LJ Cryer and Jonathan Chamwachachua. And then we still lost to North Carolina and went to the championship game. But my point is, you have to have a lot of things go your way to win a national championship. And uh, it's hard enough to do it with uh, getting a team back that's talented enough and, and is on the same page enough to win it all. But then also dealing with everybody's best shot and the added pressure that goes in. Uh, but most of all, you got to stay injury free. And um, that's hard to do in today's game as well. Well, and uh, right in front of me, and then we'll stay just in front of you. Therese Walker, the Associated Press. Scott, uh, two parts. How is your dad traveling commercial charter because of the challenge between? <laughs> He's on bus. No, I'm joking. <laughs> he commercial. Okay. And then, and then secondly, uh, your game tips an hour before Bryce's game uh, in Spokane. I mean, uh, do you even want to try to get updates during your game or just keep your focus on that, yeah. let him handle his business tomorrow? Yeah. And you've, I, I'm presuming the family may have split screen somewhere. Somewhere. Yeah, well, you, you, you're the first person who told me their game time, so <laughs> thanks for thanks for sharing that. Uh, it, him and I are both always locked in with our own teams, and I'll, I'll be honest, it's too emotional. The last thing I'd want to know is how they're doing, because if they're up, I'm worried. If they're down, I'm upset. So I, you know, after the game's over, our game's over, then I'll then I'll find out or watch it. But um, I mean, coaches got their routine. I mean, when I'm watching my brother play, if the right chair's not working, I'm standing. I mean, I'm moving around. So I got too many things to worry about than that. I'll say a prayer for him and let the good Lord decide the rest. Go ahead. Coach, you champion for the Big 12 Conference on a basketball scale and how much talent there is in it, any chance you get. So with that in mind, when you get to a chance to go up against a team who's coach might have said there was some manipulation by the Big uh -huh. 12 Conference for net purposes. Yeah. Do you uh, see it as an opportunity not only to advance, but also yeah. to show up for the Big 12? And does Brett Yormark say, hey, yeah. you know, look, look good for us yeah. tomorrow? Well, I think, I think uh, uh, first and foremost, uh, you're in uh, uh, the NCAA tournament. You don't need any added motivation. Right now, you're 
completely focused on controlling what you can control and being locked in with that. And uh, I mean, every every coach, whatever league they're in, believes their league's uh, tough and, and the best league. And uh, if you watch college basketball in the parody, it's hard to win in any league. So um, I know we, we have enough to be focused about uh, starting with a, a really well-coached team and great players. Coach, we're going to your left on the back row. Hey, Scott, Mark Whiteman from WIFF in Greenville. Uh, when Clemson's gotten into trouble this year, it's typically been not defending the three-point arc well. That's obviously essential to your identity, the three ball. So I'm just curious your thoughts on that particular aspect of the matchup. Well, I, I, one of the last things you control as a coach is if the ball goes in or not from three. You pray it does. Um, I think uh, we're going to run our offense how we run it. We're, as long as we're getting high percentage shots, we'll live with the results and uh, hopefully we do a good job uh, getting offensive rebounds when we miss. Uh, but, uh, I mean, uh, Clemson's a great program. You don't win at Alabama. You don't win at Carolina. You don't have a chance to beat Duke at Duke unless you're a really good team. And um, Again, he starts with a great coaching staff and then uh, a bunch of guys that are fourth, fifth year guys that have a lot of experience and are uh, really fundamentally sound and great players. We're staying on the same row. Coach, the, the mix of players you have on your roster, you have some freshmen, you have first year transfers, guys who have been with you for a few years. How do you make all of that work and, and be successful? Well, I think uh, uh, there is no exact science. If there was, every one of us coaches would have the same uh, uh, routine. What I love about coaching, uh, I, I, I joke with our staff, it's like getting to four. I mean, five minus one is four, two plus two, three plus one. There's a million ways to get there. Uh, you can play man, you can play zone, you can press. Um, I think with us, it's really just who fits our culture. And the more they like one another, the more they're going to compete for each other. they got to be coachable. Um, people we want to be around, they're going to represent our program and university the right way. Uh, and with us, we, we have some freshmen that don't play like freshmen, especially this time of year. I mean, they're, they're sophomores with the minutes they've logged. We're going to our right and then back to the front row. Scott, Clay Bailey with the Associated Press. We've talked about the family and everything. How much in your head is, are those voices – coming through to you as you're coaching a game, whether it's your dad or even conversations you've had with your brother? No, um, I, honestly, uh, I try to keep out all the voices in my head during the game. <laughs> a lot of times people are yelling things I don't want to hear, but uh, uh, as far as, as far as, I mean, I, I, I learned under my dad, my brother learned under my dad, and um, how, how he did things is basically uh, you're, everyone's different, and one of the best things he taught us was always adjust to what you do to the personnel and the players you have. Uh, as a coach, you're, you're a servant leader. You serve them. And uh, um, with that, I, I think the fundamentally sound values that I have as a coach, uh, they're from him and how we run a program, how we do things. Um, and then, then I hear his, hear his voice after the game on what we should have done. <laughs> Down front. Scott, back to Eve. Uh, we've seen him just kind of go like this all all season, you know, with with yeah. his development. Yeah. Uh, how much does he have the green light when he's facing a a guy up now? Because I mean, that little right hand runner, yeah. left hand runner. I mean, it's it's become a pretty good weapon for him. Well, one thing about Eve is, I mean, you look at his only playing basketball for like three years, and in high school, prolific prep. They had a great program but he was their second best big as far as scoring options and where he's come now uh, he has a great capacity to learn and learn quickly and uh, that's something that as a coach you're just blessed I mean uh, I think as parents we all want to have kids when we say it one time they do it um, and we're blessed when they listen he, he's one of those guys that really learns quick going uh, coach to our back right all right, Coach uh, Darby Brown with KWTX. Uh, your team, your national championship team, really preached sharing the sugar. And in this uh, first round game, you know, they really were doing that. Do you feel like that's when this group is at their best? No question. I think every coach in this tournament um, would hope that their team is, is, is sharing the ball and getting assists and playing the right way. Uh, at the same time, uh, you're always – taking what the defense gives you. Uh, with us, we we got a lot of guys that are capable of uh, scoring and knocking down shots. And that, that tension is always between, do I get someone else a shot or do I take a shot? And um, I know when we're taking the best shot we can get, we're a much better team like everybody else. 
The next two will come directly in front of us. Got, uh, you, you always talk about shot selection. So y'all shot 30 from three. Are you okay with that as long as they are good shot selections? And wh how did you feel about your shot selection last yeah, night? Yeah, when we make 16, I love it. <laughs> yeah, uh, when, when we make five, we're okay. We got to do something else. <laughs> but but I think I think everything you adjust to, I mean, like if you're getting great looks, but they're not going in, you're probably, uh, you need to mix in more of the paint and get into the free throw line. Um, if you're getting good shots and they're going in, you're, you're continuing to let it fly. I don't think we're ever telling a player to turn down an open shot and a good shot. But as a player, I think you always know, I mean, if I miss four threes in a row, hopefully I'm doing something different. Um, you guys, especially in that past month, have been so good in the second half and adjusting to whatever happened in the first 20 minutes. Is there some Scott special stuff like out of Space mm -hmm. Jam? You have the players uh, mm -hmm. take at halftime, mm -hmm. or what's that key to the adjustment for you? No, if if we if we had that, we'd have won every game this year. So there's definitely no uh, uh, special st sauce. But uh, I, we have a great coaching staff. They bring up a lot of great ideas to our guys to help them uh, be in position to be uh, successful. And then I think uh, our guys uh, have shown as the game settles. As they settle into the game, um, they've been able to raise their level of play um, when it's needed most. And uh, not every team can do that, so that's been a blessing. Anything else for Coach Drew? Great questions. Thank you, guys. Coach, good luck tomorrow. Thank you.